we talk about when we talk about meaning, taboo words. In this video, we're going to be talking about meaning, and we're going to be making a major distinction between linguistic meaning on one side and communicated meaning on the other side. Linguistic meaning is often also described as semantics. So, for example, if we look at the sentence, it's cold in here, we can paraphrase that sentence as the temperature is low in this place. So that's the linguistic meaning. That's the meaning that we get by virtue of the meaning of each word in the sentence and how they're combined together to form the sentence. On the other side, we've got communicated meaning, which is pragmatics. And uh, we're going to be talking more about pragmatics in some future videos. But if we take that same sentence, it's cold in here, but now we're going to look at it as an utterance, not as a sentence in and of itself, but as something that's actually uttered by a particular person in a particular context to a particular other person with a particular purpose. So this woman says, it's cold in here, and you've got this wide open window. The person who she says it to has to work out that what she said semantically is simply the temperature is low in this place. But that, taken together with the context, leads us to understand that what she wants, what she intends by saying it's cold in here, is for the other person to realize that she wants him to close the window. We do this automatically all the time. We're going to start on the linguistic meaning side, looking specifically at taboo words. So when we talk about linguistic meaning, we're talking about the word or sentence meaning. And just to remind you of stuff that we've covered in previous videos, is that language is an arbitrary sign system. So remember, if we're looking at spoken language, it's just air that comes out of our lungs, goes through our vocal tract, and gets manipulated to form sounds. And those sounds then get associated with meanings. This idea of the arbitrariness of language was first really stated scientifically by Ferdinand de Saussure. And what he said is that every word or every sign can be divided into two parts. The signifier, in this case a string of sounds, and the signified, in this case, a mental concept. So we have the signifier, bunny, and then the signified, that image that we all have of a bunny. So whatever that is up in our heads that tells us what a bunny is, that's the signified. And the meaning of an individual word is derived from linguistic knowledge. So in other words, Part of our knowing our language is knowing what words mean. In other words, there are conventions. So language is a conventional sign system, as I said, and a speech community agrees, not formally, there's no contract on this, but a, the speech community agrees on the linguistic conventions of the language. The signs in the language are arbitrary, the form, signifier, and meaning signified are arbitrarily connected. That is, they could have, you know, bunny could have meant anything else, but it just happened to be fixated on that particular fuzzy, furry animal. Any form could have been connected to a different function. Any meaning could have been connected to a different form. Usually, when we're thinking about the meaning, we think about its informational meaning. So we think about how, for example, shit means informationally, that stinky brown stuff that comes out of our anus. Shit also has another aspect of meaning, which is emotional. That shit carries with it 
emotions. When we hear or say the word, we index, that is to say, we point at how we're feeling or how the other person is feeling. So shit has a negative emotional power to it. And there's also a social aspect. The most notable social aspect with shit is that it's forbidden. Maybe not strongly forbidden in this day and age, but it is a taboo word. And that tabooness of it is part of its meaning. That's part of its social meaning, is that it's not acceptable to say any time that you feel like it, right? There are these conventions of society that have decided that certain parts of our language should be off limits. We can look at this then and compare terms of the language. So we can compare fuck, make love, and copulate, all of which have the same informational meaning, which is have coitus. Emotionally, fuck has a high emotional resonance and it's negative. Make love has a low to mid emotional resonance to it, but it's mostly positive. Copulate, on the other hand, has very little emotional resonance and it's a pretty neutral word. It doesn't really carry much emotion with us, in us. When we hear it or say it, we don't get an emotional charge out of saying copulate, whereas we do when we say fuck. All right, its social meanings, or the social meanings of each one of these words, fuck has a low register, meaning it's a very informal word and a high tabooness, or mid to high tabooness. Make love, on the other hand, is mid-register. It's neither informal nor formal, and it has a pretty low tabooness. People aren't forbidden from saying make love. Copulate has high register. That is to say it's formal, right? This is a word that we save for more formal situations, and it has a very low tabooness, at least comparatively. Another thing that we need to recognize about linguistic meaning is that it underspecifies what is communicated. So if you say something, you always mean more than the linguistic meaning. You always intend to communicate more than what is encoded in the words themselves. Which brings us to communicated meaning, pragmatic. It's getting at the utterance. So when we talk about linguistic meaning, we're either talking about words or sentences. When we talk about communicated meaning, we're talking about utterances. That is to say, linguistic phrases, sentences, words that people actually say in a context. That is to say that they're using the words and the sentences. Communicated meaning is derived from both linguistic and non-linguistic knowledge. So you need to know linguistic meaning in order to figure out what's being communicated, but you also need to bring in certain non-linguistic knowledge, and we'll see how this works. The use of a taboo word, which is what we're focusing on, can communicate informationally, emotionally, and socially. For example, if this man is listening to music and the woman comes up to him and says, that's shit then informationally what she's communicated to the man is she thinks it's bad. She doesn't like the music. But emotionally, with that same utterance, she's communicating something different, which is to say that she feels strongly about it, that she has strong emotions about that music, negative emotions. And socially, and this is interesting, she's communicated by choosing that word shit, which is taboo, she's indicating that they're friends because the conventions of language are that we don't use taboo words except in certain situations. So we don't feel comfortable just walking up to a stranger who's listening to music and say, that's shit. You only feel comfortable saying that to somebody who you feel close to. And so it's a way of indicating, hey, we're friends. We're friends, I can say this to you, but I wouldn't say it to just anybody. All right, 
As I said, we're going to get into all of this in much more detail in other videos, but I wanted to begin by just introducing the concepts.